let's get started. Today we are talking about homemade glitter. Yes, homemade glitter. Didn't think it was possible? Totally possible. Probably with things that you already have. I would say that 95-ish percentage of you already have these things at your house. And not only is it a fun project, but it uses up things that would go in the landfill and it's fantastic. So for those of you who know me, I love glitter. And I have lots of glitter, but it's all really fine and it gets everywhere and it's kind of hard to clean up and then you end up getting glitter on things you don't want to get glitter on. So I have a solution. Ta-da! It's homemade chunky glitter. Oh yeah, love my homemade chunky glitter heart. See, I have glitter on my, on my nails. Love the glitter. So, easy things. All you'll need a pile of plastic packaging. This, ironically, was from <laughs> glitter that I bought, so it already has glitter on it. Doo -doo -doo. You can have any plastic packaging, doesn't matter. I usually take, a, take the big sheets and I cut it into smaller sheets so I can fit it in my box of plastic. You can even have colored because that'll give you a totally different kind of glitter. So just because it has a print on it or a face in this case, once you chop it up, you're not even gonna see that part. You're gonna put your color on the back and then you'll have color on one side and different color on the other side. It'll make sense in a minute. Just stay with me. Then this was a random guess you're supposed to tuck it in the top of the mini blinds that I put up in my studio and in the rest of my house but sometimes I needed it and sometimes I didn't and I somehow ended up with a ton of extra one of these so I haven't made any with this yet but I'm gonna try some of that today so I'm gonna put that to the side and that's pretty much it so any thin plastic the only thing you want to avoid is you want to avoid something that's going to be too hard to cut because you are going to cut this by hand. And so if you have any hand issues or fatigue issues, I get pain in my hand. So I end up kind of chopping up some of this glitter over a long period of time instead of sitting there and trying to make a ton of it at once. So that's the first thing you need. You need random pieces of plastic. Then you need nail polish. But any kind of nail polish will work. Cheap nail polish. You don't want to use your good nail polish unless it started to go bad. It doesn't matter if it started to separate and all that kind of thing. It doesn't matter. Because for your purposes, if it goes on gloppy, it doesn't matter at all. You need some trusty scissors that aren't going to make your hands too tired. This has a rubberized grip, so it's nice. And you also want to make sure they're super sharp. And you end up with this fantastically gorgeous stuff. So this one I made with the packaging that had one color on one side and then I painted on the back. I think that's a pretty good no glare, no glare. So it was white on one side and then I painted uh, red on the other. And then this I painted on both sides and I realized you don't even need to paint on both sides because it's clear. Hello and then you end up with this fancy pink sparkle glitter which I use to make Ta -da, my little glitter heart so you're going to paint your nail polish on the plastic Pretty simple, folks. Now, as I will say with all of my videos, I give credit where credit is due. If I see someone, either a YouTuber or a blogger or 
a teacher friend that gave me an idea at work, I will give credit. If I don't give credit, it's because I think I've come up with it myself. So please don't say, oh, so-and-so on YouTube already did that. Well, that's good, but I have not seen this done myself. I don't want to get nail polish on my nail polish. So I'm going to use a little holdy down sticky thing. I'm going to make, I'm going to try, I haven't tried this white before, so I'm going to make some on the on the white and see. You're going to want to, whoops, whoops. You're going to want to paint both sides of this if you want solid glitter. If you want white on one side, blue on the other for a little one of this these kind of effects, just paint one side. So with this, because it's clear, as I mentioned before, it's blue on both sides, so you don't need to put nail polish on both sides. Save you a step. I do put two coats on, because you can see it's a little streaky. I really don't think it matters though, because when you cut it up, you're not going to see the streaks. It's not like you're you're taking one huge chunk and gluing it on something else. But I like to put two coats on, just, I don't know. Because I always put two coats on my nails, I figure I might as well put two coats on this. So this is the first of use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without art series, art supply series, really. That's my plan because I know a lot of people don't have crazy amount of expendable cash to spend on craft supplies and you don't really have to. If The only thing is that you need the time. Now clearly it would be easier to go to the craft store and buy blue glitter. Although I don't think you can find glitter that looks this color, arguably. But go to the craft store, buy it, and voila, then you can use it. This will take a little while, but I don't know, getting in the car and driving to the craft store takes a while too, so. So next you are just going to cut teeny tiny little, as small as you possibly can, slits in your plastic. And I will get closer in a moment. And you may cut a few of the strands off. No big deal. Let me get a little closer. So, as you can tell, I keep saying so. So, so, so. Teeny tiny little strands, slices, whatever you want to call them. Whatever makes you happy. So you just, you made fringe. It's like making grass in grade school. You take the green construction paper and you cut it and then you curl it and fold it and generally mess with it. And then you get grass that you can glue onto your beautiful construction paper project. So I only cut a piece about a centimeter long because it's just easier to deal with whatever your heart desires. So then you just repeat the process in the other direction. Now this is where it starts to fly. The glitter starts to fly. And clearly the smaller strips you cut and the smaller pieces, the smaller your glitter is going to end up. I like to make it a little on the larger side. A, it's easier to cut and B, I like the look of it. If I wanted teeny glitter, I would use my teeny glitter, but sometimes I want it to be chunkier. So as you can see, it's a little bit easier if you use a larger container because it catches all the pieces. I only have one little piece that went rogue outside of my container. This is also recycled. It's those Pringles to go packs. Again, sharp scissors, very, very important. And voila, your glitter. And the thickness of it depends on the thickness of the plastic that you start with, clearly. Hmm. So I'm gonna continue to chop up some glitter and then I'll show you what the end product is. This is what results from, that was about a two inch square of plastic lovely little pile of glitter. 
as I said, it can be a little bit tedious, but I like to think of it as soothing. So all I did was I cut it in my little container, I turned it upside down, dumped it over. It's really hard to, to pour out of this, so I'm just putting it on my piece of recycled cardboard. And then you can just pop it in your container. Voila! I like that color. Pretty blue. All right, I have cut up all four of my different glitters and I love them. Lighting's not so great. Blue. That was the blue on the clear. Blue on the white. And I only painted the one side. That is gorgeous. Loving that one. Have to see if I can find some more white plastic. This, I did not expect to be, hmm, I need it on a white background. And then this is the purple that I painted on both sides of the white plastic. I really did not expect to like this one as much, but once you cut it, you see these hints of the white core of the plastic and it's just so fun. So these are more, they're all sparkly, but these are more matte than your traditional glitter, but I really like that. And then of course, if you use a glitter polish, it's gonna be more glittery. And since I love this one so much, I took another two pieces. And again, I put three coats on. I love my little spot for holding on to it. And one thing that I don't think I mentioned before is I usually will cut about, what size piece is this? About a two inch piece. It's just the right size because you want to, for me at least, you want to cut almost to the end, but you have to give yourself a place to hold on to it. And if it gets too wide, it's difficult to cut the other direction. So I usually have about a two inch long piece and about three quarters of an inch wide. And that works for me, but you'll figure it out. You'll find out what works best for you. Just one more time. And then you have the little pieces and then chop, 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 chop. So I definitely wanted to make more of that because that is my favorite. And I also thought about another storage option for this. I had purchased these a long time ago from GFS, Gordon Food Service. I think it's just in the Midwest, but they may be expanding. But any restaurant supply store, or if I think schools will have these too because kids will use these for art you know, put paint in or glue in or whatever. I use them with my kids at school all the time for various projects. And a lot of times if they need little pieces on a project, I will have them all ready ahead of time and each kid will get a container. But this would also be really great to store this if you wanted to go for a much cheaper option because these are eight in a package for a dollar. And since the glitter is so cheap, you don't really want to spend more on the storage than you do on the material. <laughs> That's just my thought. So I'll probably go back to using these. I use these for beads. And these I wanted to make into the watercolor palette. So I may switch them over to this. this and then it has the, it's the best of both worlds, I think, because it has the clear lid. You can't see it. And you can probably see a little bit through the white plastic, but you still have the clear lid so you can see exactly what kind of glitter is in there. Just another storage option that I thought about. So, that's pretty much it. I will have some still photos of projects that I use with this. I just quickly made this junky journal with some scrap cardboard that I used to clean my brush. I was working on this journal cover and this was just my extra piece that I wiped my brush on, but then I ended up really liking it took some bubble wrap and stamped that. So I decided to make this into a quick junk journal and just took random pieces from my stash 
some book pages. I'm planning to use this for acrylics or as a glue book for collage things that I like. So it really doesn't matter what the, the papers look like. I will show you what I end up putting on the journal cover with the glitter that I've made. I hope you've enjoyed the video and until next time, go crazy and craft something fun. <laughs>